Hi guys and welcome back to the WTF. We've got uh, another interesting video uh, this evening and um, uh, well we're all going QRO actually, we're all going QRO, a bit of high power linear amplifier stuff and uh, this project, um, well <laughs> I, 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 uh, I shouldn't really admit it but it's, it's, it's a bit of a piss take of the old um, CBers, um, especially uh, the ones in the state. So, um, guys, hope you got a sense of humour. It's all uh, it's all a bit of fun. Anyhow, this um, this video uh, is, was sort of inspired by uh, a bit of research I was doing on the net, where I was uh, uh, looking at linear amplifier uh, circuits and uh, videos, and I found that a lot of the uh, a lot of uh, guys in the states, uh, particularly CB, as we're building these huge. QRO amplifiers um, using these uh, ceramic uh, triodes mostly uh, and uh, I just happened to have a, um, a well a couple of uh, uh, triodes um, high power RF triode ceramic things which were on the shelf of shame so to speak not doing anything gathering dust uh, and I had one which I thought I would perhaps uh, make a uh, a amp linear amplifier out of uh, as a bit of a bit of a test rig, so to speak, just to see if it um, if it worked or not. Because I wasn't sure. I got it actually from my uh, from my friend uh, Paul Ian's brother, who you often seen him on the jet uh, engine videos. Um, so uh, I thought what I'd do is um, see if this rig up a, a sort of a bench linear amplifier and see if I'd get this thing to work, if, if it would work at all, um, and um, yeah, uh, see what see what happens. But as I said, this um, this whole project was brought about by some of these uh, crazy uh, CBs who are building these huge uh, linear amplifiers uh, running into you know thousands of watts, uh, which I was actually quite surprised about because I didn't know much about this. But apparently in America and also here, you're only really limited to four watts output. But uh, I think it's not particularly well uh, governed. I think there's this thing. According to my research I did, there's this thing called free banding where people sort of transmit uh, outside the CB bands um, and they seem to uh, seem to be quite keen on using uh, quite a lot of power. And um, Anyhow, so the um, a lot of these um, <laughs> a lot of these transmitters, a lot, well a lot of these linear amplifiers I should say, they always seem to be called things like wizard built or storm basher built or um, some other uh, sort of funny name uh, followed by the word built. So I thought we would do the WTF built QRO linear amplifier. So that's what we've done. Anyhow, without further ado, let's go to the bench and I'll show you what I've done. So what we have here on the bench is a 3 CPX 1500 A7 and it's a high power triode and I'm sure most amplifier builders are sort of familiar with these sort of tubes and I've actually built an amplifier using a similar tube which was similar sort of configuration I should say using a Russian GS35B and that video is sort of on my uh, channel if you want to have a look at that but um, this back, this tube actually is um, well. Coming back to the CBers, uh, some of them have actually built uh, amplifiers with this um, tube, vacuum tube valve, whatever you want to call it, and uh, some of them have been really sort of quite powerful. Just to give you some specs on this. So this is 1500 watts anode dissipation, as it says in the uh, title. But uh, usually these will probably, with a good fan on them, probably uh, dissipate a little bit more. And some of the circuits I've seen, people have used these, uh, you know, for linear amplifiers up to two kilowatts output. And I think, uh, you know, the standard sort of voltages on these, are, you know, usually about three to four kV. Although if you look at the data sheet, this will actually handle even higher, possibly, you know, because this this tube was originally designed as a pulse in pulse uh, RF applications, it's actually rated much higher than. Uh, the sort of voltages that you know us lowly amateurs will use. Um, 
The other interesting thing about it is that the equivalent of this is, is the 8877, which was a very popular valve, um, <clears throat> you know, earlier on, um, you know, 20, 30 years ago. Uh, and I presume this is probably the replacement for it, the more sort of modern equivalent. But the, the 8877, if you look in the old ARL handbooks, uh, you'll see quite a few circuits using... Um, uh, the 8877, <clears throat> which is very similar to this. In fact, it's pretty much identical in terms of plate dissipation th and things like that. So anyway, what we've done is um, we're going to use this tube to build um, our sort of uh, mock-up or uh, type of um, CB badass linear amplifier type thing. Um, see how much power we can get. I think at the end of the day we're probably limited by sort of how much voltage and, and uh, current we can uh, you know get from the power supply but I've got some uh, pretty meaty power supplies here that we might be able to uh, do something with this. So the thing what we'll do is we'll uh, show you my uh, lash up linear and uh, hopefully give you a bit of a demonstration on it working. Ta -da! So this is the WTF built linear amplifier, the big bastard linear amplifier, well not so big actually, or sometimes or we can call it the desktop kilowatt uh, as it's uh, sprawled out on the desktop as you can see. Um, <clears throat> what, what, what would probably be in a nice shiny chassis is uh, stuck on the desk and that is the filament transformer. We've got our cathode box there which came out of an old Marconi signal generator. We've got the plate choke which you saw me winding on the last video. We've got a lash up tank coil uh, which was um, came out of something I'm not sure given to me. And the Pi output which is vacuum capacitor and a uh, slightly sort of biggish variable cap, pretty standard really. Just want to show you a few things in here, if it will let me. So down there in the corner I've got a Pi input circuit. Um, you don't actually really need this with this tube because this has been, because the RF or the input is fed into the cathode and the cathode impedance of this valve is actually 50 ohms. You can actually drive this directly straight from your transceiver without actually having to use that matching circuit but that's actually a, a, a Pi input uh, circuit for 80 meters. I just designed this for 80 meters to see how we uh, to see if it all works. Uh, what else is there in here? That in the corner there is the cathode choke and there's a couple of capacitors, decoupling capacitors the fan and the the bias the biasing of this is done through a couple of zener diodes on that heatsink there i didn't the normal the standard bias voltage for this is about 8 volts but i didn't have any 8 volt zeners so i've just strung um a 6 volt and a 3 volt uh 3 point something whatever it was to get about 10 volts of bias uh which um does seem to be work does seem to work okay actually and um, we've got 10k resistor there which is switched uh, in series with the cathode when the you know for for idling and then when you um, transmit uh, you've got a relay down there which uh, switches in your uh, zener diodes so guys this is probably the simplest linear amplifier you're ever going to see doesn't even have a case. Um, in good WTF quality. Who needs a case when you can lash it up on the desk? Uh, it's all highly lethal, of course, once we uh, put the valve in and connect it up to the power supply. We should be running at about 3.2 kV. Uh, sorry, not, no, not quite as high as that, about 2.8 kV. Uh, from the power supply, so um, quite a modest value really. And uh, we will see whether we can get any RF out of this. 
this, uh, this this lash up, I should say. Right, let's uh, let's connect everything up. See what happens. Okay, folks, <clears throat> I've got everything set up here. We've got the fan blasting away. Haven't got any HD applied uh, at the moment. So the uh, the Ellie Craft uh, K3S is going to be driving the, uh, the the linear, and uh, we've got two meters here. So we've got the bird and. Apologies for the blue light there, we'll get a bit closer. So we're going to be on the top scale there. This is a, a this bird has got a thousand watt slug in it. Uh, so it's the top scale there. So full scale deflection will be uh, one kilowatt. And then, as I said, that will be peak envelope power. And then the Daiwa. Again, if we can just get a bit closer, this is on the maximum scale, three kilowatt scale. Uh, so about halfway along, or just under halfway along, will be uh, will be one kilowatt. Just give you an idea of what we're looking for on the power meters. So let's um, let's connect up the HT, and we'll see what happens. So we got the uh, the HT on standby, and uh, <clears throat> what we'll do is we'll switch that on. So the HT is now on. We mustn't go anywhere near it because it's uh, fairly uh, lethal. We might get a small electric shock if we touch anything now. So what we'll do is we'll um, we'll just uh, put about six watts in it, and uh, we'll see what. Uh, See what it shows. Just six watts of drive. We can do that from the from the Ellie Craft. So what we'll do is we'll switch on the. So you can just see the uh, standby current going up slightly, and we will apply. So we've got six watts of drive there. And we can quickly. If we can have a look at the power meter there. Look at the power meters. So I've actually tuned this up already. So we're just shy of two hundred watts. On the uh, on the die where there we should be able to just peak that up a little bit. That's about as much it will go. I had the slug turn round the wrong way on the bird, uh, so I'll just fix that. We'll just uh, zoom in on the bird, and there you go. It's showing 200 watts of uh, RF out. And that's only um, just to show you that we're not kidding with the amount of drive. I'll just bring the camera into there. So we've got the key down. Six watts. That's input power, 200 watts out. I think we will switch that off there. Put it back into uh, standby. And we will have another focus on the power meters again. See if I can get a bit closer. So 
So <coughs> what I'll do is I'll increase the. I'm going to just use the. Um, going to use the microphone and uh, kind of limit the, limiting the input power to 30 watts and 35 watts. So we'll just try it again. And just so we're on uh, single sideband now. Let's just see what happens. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, one, two. That's a audio, audio. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, one, two. So we are keeping one kilowatt there on the bird and an average power on the, uh, on the die were about 200, 300 watts. Oh yeah, and I'm, uh, my plate current, uh, which you can't see at the moment because it's camera focused on the output, uh, is sort of oh yeah, going up to about half an hour. So it's 2.8 kV at half an hour. And that's... Um, that is basically with, uh, let's just move this back a bit. So that is essentially just with limited to 30, about 35 watts uh, peak power. So essentially if you were to drive this even harder, I mean, unfortunately my, um, my meters are sort of at the end of their end of their uh, uh, scope, but I did uh, I did have this uh, <coughs> on um, up to average power of one kilowatt, uh, driving it with about 30 watts uh, continuous uh, carrier. So for a bit of a lash up, um, I think any CBA would be quite proud of this. Um, so, uh, so there we go. Anyway, what I must do is, uh, I think I need to, let's just turn this around here, because that's the big bastard power supply. Uh, I think we probably need to turn that off before we get electrocuted. I'll just put the camera back on there. So uh, there we go. There we go. I think that's quite a good demonstration of this um, this this, uh, this linear. I'm just going to turn this fan down a bit because it's quite noisy. And the other thing I'm going to do is I switch the filament off before I forget. I don't want to leave it on. So um, <clears throat> yeah, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with this. Uh, it really is quite tempting to sort of build it up into a box and make a proper linear amplifier but I've got so many well I've got so many I've got already got a few homebrew linears um, <clears throat> but this one really is um, uh, potentially quite a pokey little beast uh, so anyway uh, I think that's more or less it guys I uh, hope you enjoyed this um, lash up linear uh, the WTF built and uh, hopefully we'll um, catch you guys again soon thanks for watching <coughs>